Hello people, how are you? In the last video, we started off with the conjunctiva, correct? So we started off with the anatomy of conjunctiva. So there, what did we see? We saw the definition of conjunctiva, right guys? So we saw it is a translucent mucous membrane which lies the posterior surface of the eyelids and the anterior surface of the eyeball. So there are two parts to it, right? So you have the uh, lining, posterior lining of the eyelid and the anterior lining of the eyeball, right? And in between these two, you have what is the fornix which connects the palpebral conjunctiva with the bulbar conjunctiva. The for conjunctival fornix connects these two, right? Then what we saw, we saw that to each of these again, there are other parts. Let us say if this is the palpebral conjunctiva, we saw that in palpebral conjunctiva, you have three parts. You have the marginal part, you have the tarsal part and then you have the orbital part, three parts there, right? So you have the marginal part which is continuous with the skin, the tarsal part which is above the tarsal glands and you have the orbital part, right? Now coming to the bulbar conjunctiva, you have something called as the limbus, limbal conjunctiva which is around the limbus of the cornea, correct? So basically, if you know what limbus is, you will understand. So just look at what limbus is. So around the cornea, you have this is the lining there. Right? This is the limbus. So around the limbus, 3 millimeter of the conjunctiva is called as the limbal conjunctiva. Okay. So this much we have seen, guys. So <coughs> what else we saw? We saw what conjunctival sac is. We saw what palpebral fissure is. Correct. We saw all this. Then. We looked at the structure of the conjunctiva where we saw the epithelium, the adenoid layer and the fibrous layer. So three layers we saw here, the epithelial, adenoid uh, or the lymphoid layer which has all the lymphocytes and you have the fibrous layer. The fibrous layer is usually thicker than the adenoid layer except in one place everywhere fibrous layer is going to be thicker than the adenoid layer. Where is the fibrous layer thin? In the tarsal conjunctiva. Okay. So you should understand here that the tarsal conjunctiva is very unique considering the fibrous layer here will be very thin. Okay. So and you can see yellow streaks around it, right? That will be the tarsal gland. Okay. That much you should understand. Then one more thing you should understand that the adenoid layer, right? It is not developed when at birth. At birth, the adenoid layer will not be developed okay this adenoid layer will develop after birth three to four months after birth so what happens when an infant has or a newborn right it has conjunctivitis or conjunctival inflammation that time there will be no follicular reaction because the adenoid layer will be absent in an infant okay it will not be fully developed usually in the fornices right the adenoid layer will be very well developed it's also called as lymphoid layer and it has lymphocytes so now guys, shall we move on to the newer aspect of this video? The newer aspect of this video is glands of conjunctiva. This is where we have to start, right? Glands of conjunctiva, plica semilunaris, caruncle, blood supply of conjunctiva and nerve supply of conjunctiva. This many topics we'll try to cover in this video. Would you believe guys, if we say that this conjunctiva has glands, can you imagine? They have so many glands within them. There are so many that you will get surprised now. Okay, there are mucin secretory glands and accessory lacrimal glands. Main two headings are these, mucin secretory glands and accessory lacrimal glands. Now, when it comes to mucin secretory glands, you have goblet cells. What will they secrete, guys? Mucin, right? You have goblet cells, right? Then you have crypts of Henle, right? And then you have glands of Mans. Then when it comes to accessory lacrimal glands, you have glands of Krause. We always go with the spelling, guys. Krause and glands of Wolf, Wolf Ring. Okay, it is actually W-O-L-F-R-I-N-G. So we will go with the spelling always Wolf Ring. Okay, glands of Krause and Wolf Ring. It could be some Krau and S and E could be silent, but we are always going with the spelling, guys. So, mucin secretory glands, you have goblet cells, crypts of Henle, glands of Mans, and accessory lacrimal glands, you have glands of Krauss, 
glands of Wolfrey. Okay, so now it's time to see where exactly these are. So many glands, right? So let us go and look for a diagram which says where they are. First of all, let's try to locate what we can here. Glands of Krauss shown here. Glands of Wolfring shown here. Right? Then you have some other glands. Any other glands shown here? Two glands are shown here. Okay, so these two are what? Both of these are the accessory lacrimal glands. So where is the gland of cross? Glands of cross are present in the subconjunctival connective tissue of fornices. So obviously you can see it is in the fornice. That is easy to say, right? So there are very specific details here about 42 in the upper fornix and 8 in the lower fornix. So there are 42 of these glands here. And there are eight glands here in the lower fornix. Wow, they have counted these glands as 42. That's really interesting. Now coming to glands of wolf ring, they are present along the upper border of the superior tarsus. Superior tarsus, right? They are present in the upper border of the superior tarsus, yes. And along the lower border of the inferior tarsus. Along the lower border of the inferior tarsus. Let's look at these. Nothing guys, just here that's all. Lower border of inferior tarsus. Sup uh, upper border of superior tarsus and lower border of inferior tarsus. That is the glands of Wolfring. So what did you see in accessory lacrimal glands? There are two. Right? In accessory lacrimal glands, there are two. Glands of Krauss and glands of Wolfring. Correct? No guys? Glands of Krauss, the R, uh, K, W. K and W you should remember. Lacrimal. Lacrimal is what? Crying, let's say. Crying, Krauss, glands of Krauss and wolf ring. Okay. The wolf ring is making him cry. So, wake up guys. So, what are we looking at today? We are looking at conjunctiva. We are looking at what in that? We are looking at the glands in conjunctiva. Imagine conjunctiva is just a mucous membrane and they are telling there are so many glands in that. So interesting, right? And they are saying there are 42 of these glands of Krauss in the upper part and uh, eight in the lower fornix. Wow. And then you have glands of wolf, wolf ring, right, which are present upper border of the superior tarsus and lower border of inferior tarsus. Krauss is where in the fornix and wolf ring in the palpebral conjunctiva. Very good. Now let us see the mucin secretory glands. You have the goblet cells, right? These are uh, within the epithelium. You have seen already in the epithelium structure. We have mentioned goblet cells. So definitely in the epithelium itself, wherever epithelium is there, you can say one goblet cell. Like this one goblet you can draw and say there will be goblet cells in the epithelium. No specific position everywhere probably. Because here they have just mentioned that they are unicellular glands located within the epithelium. Okay, now coming to crypts of Henle. It is present in the tarsal conjunctiva. Right, crypts of Henle are present, um, are the glands, mucin secretory glands present in the tarsal conjunctiva. Okay, and the glands of man's, man's are found in the limbal conjunctiva. Let's find them guys. So let's find them guys here. So where is the tarsal conjunctiva here? So in tarsal conjunctiva, you should find the crypts of Henle. Don't for confuse with the Henle loop in the kidney nephron. These are crypts of Henle, not loop of Henle. Crypts of Henle. And where will the glands of man's be? Ma this is Henle. Where, is, where will man's be? In the limbal conjunctiva. In the limbal conjunctiva, here you will have the man's, right? M A N Z S. <coughs> here you will have the crypts of Henle. In the palpebral conjunctiva, that too in the tarsal conjunctiva. And the Mans, the glands of mans are found in the limbal conjunctiva. All of these, uh, and whereas you'll have the goblet cells, all of these produce what guys? Mucin. They produce mucin. Okay, good. So guys, we are done with the glands of conjunctiva. Understood, no? We have completed glands of conjunctiva. Wake up if you're sleeping. Now what will we move to? Plica semilunaris. 